Good morning and welcome back to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. Today we're working on the remodel and it's an electrical day. Just a reminder, I am not a licensed electrician. So don't take anything I say as gospel. If you're not sure what you're doing with electrical, please call an electrician to come take care of it for you. Here's a fantastic lesson about electrical safety while you're doing a remodel. I had put this outlet back together uh, last week. We were just checking to see if all the pieces would fit together and how it was going to look when we were done. And now I'm going to take it apart so that I can show you how I put, to, put it together. But I thought maybe I should check this and make sure that the power is off and it's not. So somehow in playing with the electrical circuits, I uh, turned that one back on. So we're going to have to get that outlet killed before we can take it apart. So this is the way you want your electrical to look when you're done and ready for drywall. We do still have to cut a hole in the drywall for the box to stick through. If the best you can do is a drywall saw, one of those little ones you cut by hand, you'll have to take measurements from the edge of the wall, figure out where the center of the hole is, and try to cut it out to match. I have a roto zip, which is just a small saw that uh, has a round blade on it. It will allow me to go in here and cut the drywall out after it's put up. Much easier way to, uh, to do these cuts. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a little bit, but you just want your wires already landed and ready to go. Go ahead and strip the insulation back. That's going to save you a lot of time when you get ready to put your electrical outlet in. And when time comes, we'll show you how to hook all of this up. And this is an overabundance of caution, but you guys saw how this was a live circuit just a few minutes ago. We are going to be sticking a roto zip in here blind. Uh, if these wires are live and we hit one of them, it's a bad deal. If they're sticking out like this and suddenly that breaker is turned back on, these will be live wires. The black is typically the one you're most interested in protecting yourself from, but that's only nine times out of ten. Occasionally, uh, this uh, white wire will actually have your power on it. It won't be the common. It depends on what kind of crazy three-way setup you may have with the switch in the room for controlling the light. So we want to make sure we protect ourselves from these open wire ends. Uh, one easy way is just not to uh, cut the wires, don't strip them back. But you can also make sure you put on a wire nut. Give it a good tug, make sure it's not going to come off. And although that's a common and not hot, we'll go ahead and cap it as well just to make sure we stay safe. And then in preparation for the drywall installation, we don't want this wire sticking out in our way. So we'll go ahead and fold it back up inside the box. Try to keep the wires away from the edge of the inside of the box. This is kind of where the roto zip will start. And then we'll pull it out and go to the outside edge and cut around the outside. And you can't see it from here, but there are two little notches uh, on the outside of the box that help you to align it with the stud so you can get the half inch depth you need for the drywall. And I'll show you that over here on the other box. This is just a standard switch or outlet box. Uh, it has already got the nails in it that's designed to mount directly to a stud. All you need is a hammer to install these things. So over here on this stud is where we're gonna put it. And all we gotta do is align the box. You've got these uh, tabs here on the side. Those push back against the stud. You wanna mount these to your wife's height, not your own. We'll kind of put it about where the other light switch is that's on the inside of the bedroom. Grab a hammer and tap your nails in. And you can see how when we get the drywall in and this stud is perfectly secured, this is going to be a much more stable platform for this switch than just having it hanging in the drywall. We needed the battery for the drill, and then we need some paddle bits. You could use auger bits uh, to drill these holes. I like the paddle bits. They're a little bit more versatile, uh, come in real handy in a lot of other situations. This is a fantastic set from Irwin. I found this in a discount rack, paid $5 for the whole set. We just want something big enough for the wires to go through. I want to give myself plenty of room. I'm going to grab a 7 8 
We're going to be drilling a hole right through the middle of the stud. You may be concerned that we're putting a hole in a stud, but the outside edges of the stud are still being intact. It'll still be load bearing, even if it has to be. So don't be concerned about putting a hole through the middle of the stud. So this is the wall where we need to drill a hole. I've added this stud into the middle of the wall. It did not have one. Uh, that's actually a pretty bad design to have studs only on the outside edges of the walls. You have some racking problems, uh, plus it's just completely hollow and the drywall is unsupported across the middle. So we've added this stud in. When I put the stud in, I put it in between where my wires come in on the top plate. That means at some point through here, the wires are going to have, have to pass back through. We've only got one hot line coming in from the breaker box. We're going to bring that into this switch box for this switch, but that hot also has to go over to the other switch to power the light in the bedroom. So we'll have to have a hole in order for the wires to go through. So that's what we're doing now is just putting a hole through the middle of the stud. So these are pretty fancy switch boxes. The wires are actually pushed down in between metal prongs. It gets really crowded in here when you have multiple wires. I like the old school way of doing this. So we've got a single pole switch. We're going to be wire nutting all of the hots and commons together on this one in order to make a solid circuit. So we're not really concerned about this switch. We're not going to try to save it for anything else. So all we got to do is cut the wires loose rather than trying to pull them free. So all we need to do is cut these wires rather than trying to pull them back out of the switch box. It's a whole lot faster. So I've done a little troubleshooting to figure out where power is coming from. This outlet box for the washer is on an outside wall circuit. It's probably an isolated circuit. There's not going to be anything else on here. It's just for the washing machine, which can pull a lot of amperage when the motors are kicking on. The rest of the power enters the room right down here. Passes through this wall where we have the outlet in the bedroom comes up into the light switch for the bedroom and then daisy chains over to the light switch for the laundry room. The two wires that go up from this box and up into the ceiling, one of those is going to go out to the light fixture in the laundry room. The other one probably loops over into the bathroom to provide power in there. So that's all going to be on one circuit. This other wire to the left that's going up into the ceiling is for the light fixture inside of the bedroom. Remember guys, I'm not an electrician, but I want to give you some idea what it is that I'm doing to decipher all of these different pieces, parts, and how the electrical is flowing. I know that this wire that comes through the wall is bringing the power in from the breaker box and it goes into this switch. That means that I have one wire that's going out to the light fixture in the bedroom. So this switch is controlling power on this wire. And then this extra wire is actually bringing power over to the other switch and onto the rest of the circuit. So I know that this is going to be my power coming in. So I'm just going to write a P on it for power for right now. Should probably put that a little further down because I'm going to be cutting off the insulation there. So now we've got a label on this wire. We know that's where our power is coming from. What we don't know is which of these two wires controls the light fixture here in the laundry room. So what I'm going to do is wire the power up directly to the light switch just by putting a wire nut between these wires and we'll turn the breaker back on, see if the light comes on. So to prepare this wire to actually access the conductors on the inside, the first thing we need to do it's just lightly wanted a razor blade down the length of the insulation. That's going to allow us to peel the insulation back. Try to keep your blade in the center. That's where your uh, ground wire, which doesn't get insulated, is going to be. So if you do nick a wire, it'll be the ground wire. It's no big deal. And we peel back the paper. And we'll cut that stuff off. So now we have our uh, three wires exposed. This is our power. That's going to be the ground wire with no insulation. And then the white is the common or the return back to the breaker. Next, we're going to pull off about three quarters of an inch of the insulation. Just need a good pair of wire strippers for that. It's got little holes that are exactly the right size for the wire. 
So it only cuts deep enough to get through the insulation. Yes, you can do that with a pair of diagonal color cutters if you're talented, but I recommend just getting the right tool. And then all we need to do now is connect these wires with the wires we suspect are going into the light fixture. So we get these stripped off. And then we're just gonna match black to black, white to white. Black wire is our power. When you're putting on a wire nut, if, if it's for a permanent installation, keep turning the nut until the wires start to twist together. Otherwise, just get it on there secure. And this is just temporary, so we can test this wire and find out exactly what it does. Good to go. Now we'll turn on the breaker, see if the light comes on here in the room. So we had a completed circuit and the light did not come on in the room when we turned on the breaker. That means that this wire that goes up through the ceiling is actually going out to the rest of the house. It actually lands in the bathroom next. So our power comes in and it's going out to the bathroom. That means this other wire is going to be our light fixture here in the laundry room. And yes, I used my tester and made sure that these wires were again dead, that we have the correct breakers off before we start messing with them. So before we move any further, we want to make sure we get a label on this one. And this one is the light fixture. So just put an L on that. And this one goes to the rest of the circuit. So I'll put a C on that one for the circuit. Now that we know which wires do what, uh, it should be an easy job to land these wires and be ready to put a switch in. All right, this part is going to get a little bit confusing, but see if you can follow me. It's just like running water. Water's coming in, or the power is coming in on this wire on the black conductor. We want that power to flow to the rest of the circuit, so we'll have to connect these two black wires in order to get power out to the bathroom and the other bedroom. We also need power to go out to the light fixture, but that's going to be this wire. We don't want it connected directly to the power the way that we do the circuit. This goes on the other side of the switch to allow us to turn the light on and off. All of these white wires are just returns. So that's your common. These all go back to the breaker box. So we'll just put a wire nut on all three of those and that'll connect everything back to the breaker. Same is true of the grounds. We'll just connect all of the grounds back together to give us a solid circuit to ground. Now I know that's pretty confusing, but I'm gonna go ahead and wire this stuff together and you'll see what it looks like. So the first thing to separate out is gonna be the commons. Make sure these all get connected together. When you're buying your wire nuts, uh, make sure you know how many wires will fit inside of one. Make sure you get the right size wire nuts. And we just keep shoving those in and turning until the wires start to twist together. Now oh, we got one wire loose. So this happens. You just got to keep working until all three wires are secured together inside of the wire nut. Everything is good and tight. Now we need power to go out to the circuit. This is the bathroom and other bedroom. Oh, almost forgot, guys. We do have to be able to get power out to the light fixture as well. So I'm gonna add a little pigtail into this one and this other end of the pigtail will connect to the switch. And they're starting to twist together. Just give each one of those a tug. Make sure it's not gonna come loose. And then our ground wires. And these don't actually need a wire nut on them. So we can just twist these all up together. There we go. All of that is set and ready to go. All we need to do is connect our switch on these two black wires. That switch will be the last thing that closes the circuit to allow the light to come on. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and connect the switch so you guys can see what that looks like. So to connect these to logs on a switch, just wanna get a hook in the end of the wire. So I'm just using the tip of the needle nose here. Just give it a little bend, slide down a little bit, bend some more until we get a nice rounded hook that'll fit over the lug. Screwdriver. Now these switches go either way. Uh, it really doesn't matter which direction the switch is when you attach the wires. We'll find out which is on and which is off when we connect it to the breaker. You wanna make sure that your hook is hooking around in a clockwise direction. Once it's on, just pinch the wire to give it a little tension. And go ahead and tighten the screw down. It's important that you go in that clockwise direction so that as you're turning the screw, it's pulling the wire in tighter and not pushing it off of the lug. Get that nice and snug. And one more wire to go on. That was our pigtail. And this will be our, our uh, power going out to the light itself. Nice and snug. Now let's give it a test. So we've got the breaker turned back on. Our switch is all wired in. All we want to do now is just give it a test. And we have light. All right, for the purposes of this video so that I could show you what I was doing, I only stripped back about three inches of the outside insulation. When you're actually landing wires in a switch box like this, be kind to yourself. You don't need all of this additional insulation on the outside of the wire inside of the box. Give yourself a good six inches to work with. It's gonna make it much easier to manage the wires, get the wire nuts on, and definitely a lot easier to get it shoved back in the box. And for right now, we've got everything tight. We don't need it sticking out right now because we wanna hang drywall. So I'll literally just shove the wires back up in the box and out of the way. Anytime you're opening up a wall that someone else built and you're looking at someone else's work, it's possible that they didn't do it the right way. Never assume that because you found it that way that it's correct. I've been looking at this electrical and something's been bugging me about it. These wires are supposed to be secured with a staple to the stud every two feet. This is well over three feet, meaning that there should be staples holding these to the studs. So I'm gonna go ahead and staple them down while I got it open. So need this one secured. Just pulling the slack down near the switch. That's where we'll have our service loop. Now to hold those wires securely to the stud the way they're supposed to be. And we're almost finished with the electrical in this room, but this is a little bit different outlet. This is for the dryer. I don't like the way it's mounted with the wires just sticking through the drywall and into the back of the box. So I'm going to head to Lowe's to get something more appropriate for this installation. In the meantime, we've got drywall to hang, so we're going to get busy doing that. We do appreciate you joining us here on the Return Homestead today. Please subscribe, hit that like button while you're in there, and we'll catch you on the next video.